Oh, man. I used to be on top of the world, brother. All pro quarterback, four years running. Voted the sexiest Texan in 2004. Yeah, man, I beat out Dennis Quaid and Matthew McConaughey, for Christ's sake. Yeah, so I drank a few beers now and then, popped occasional pill. That's nothing compared to what the team quacks to shoot me up with just so I could play. And sometimes I just need to numb the pain, you know what I'm saying? My biggest vice was speed. No, not meth, buddy. Adrenaline. I blew every penny I had on the fastest cars I could find. Just so you know, I'm a damn good driver. If that asshole I was street racing hadn't sideswiped me, I never would have crashed. And that, uh, that poor girl would still be alive. That's right. That's right. It's his goddamn fault. I shattered my leg in six goddamn places. So I had a few drinks in me. So what the fuck? I drive drunk better than I do sober anyway. Of course, couldn't play worse shit after that. After I got out of jail, I canned my ass. I'd have violated the morals clause on my goddamn contract. Ended up playing semi-pro in fucking Canada. <sighs> but I'm still a name. Oh, yeah. I'm still a celebrity. That's why they wanted me to promote their blood drive here. That's why they fucking flew me first class halfway around the goddamn world. Because my name still means something. Logan Carter is no goddamn douchebag. I hate rich assholes, which is fucking ironic, since I'm expected to put my bloody life on the line for them. That's what they pay me for, this pricey hotel here. To be a bodyguard for the rich and famous fuckwits who come to Benoy to blow their money. I used to be a cop, a bloody good one. A vice detective in Sydney. You know how many female half-Aborigine detectives there were before me? None. <laughs> you think it was easy? Suffering the abuse of my so-called colleagues. Half of them hated me because I was a girl. And the other half didn't like the fact that my mum was a curry. So I came up the hard way. I busted my ass. It took me 12 years to make detective and that still wasn't enough. It's an old boys club, you know? The whole justice system is a fucking joke. Teenage drug addicts get put away forever and old white wankers who steal fucking millions get away scot-free. <laughs> One rich bugger I investigated was clearly molesting his 14-year-old daughter. But he had too much pull with the politicians, so I couldn't touch him. After the girl killed herself, I confronted him, but he just laughed at me. He pulled out a pistol and told me he could blow my bleeding head off and no one would care. Because I was nothing. A nobody. An abo bitch. So I fucking took his gun away and shot the bastard. It was self-defence, but I still got sacked. Twelve bloody years down the drain. Worst part is, I didn't even kill the son of a bitch. I just yelled at him. One day, I'm gonna have to go back and finish the job. My father was a very great man, a chief inspector for the Hong Kong police. Even though he died when I was 10, I remember him very well. He was killed by an enforcer for the Wo Xing Wo Triad. And I told myself then that I would follow in his footsteps and honor his memory. He taught me martial arts and I continued to practice after he was gone. After finishing at the top of my university class, I joined the Hong Kong police and was chosen as part of the first all-female anti-organized crime squad. I worked hard, I did my best, but the men in charge never intended to put us on the front lines. They didn't train us the way they promised they would. They didn't believe any of us women were up to the task. We were only for show. Instead, my superiors sent me here, to this resort, to this front desk to be an informer, to spy on wealthy Westerners. My father would not be proud of me. This work dishonors his memory. But I will do as they ask, for I am a patriot. But I know I am capable of much, much more. I just need the opportunity to prove myself. I grew up in New Orleans. Lower Ninth War. My daddy went to prison when I was two. That's where he died. Angola. Mama didn't ever recover from that. Just drank and did crack. 
and any random motherfucker who didn't smack her around too bad. My nana the one who raised me. She run the Walsh Interior. We lived in a little shotgun house on Burgundy. From the time I was 10, man, I want to rap. I was into old school freestyle rap. And I'd be kicking ass at them battles, bro. But man, just couldn't catch a break. Nothing caught on. So, one Halloween, I come up with, who do you voodoo, bitch? Just as a motherfucking joke, you know? <laughs> Went right to the top of the hip hop charts like a motherfucking rocket. And suddenly, I was famous. Going to the Grammys, hitting the parties. Man, I had bitches up to yin yang. And for the first time in my life, I was making money. Shit. I was spending it as quick as I was getting it. I thought I'd made it, you know what I'm saying? That that grave train wasn't there going in. So I did another song, and another song, and nothing hit. Nothing fucking hit. Song after song, and ain't nobody give a shit. It's been 10 years, man. And yeah, I can still get gigs, but all they want me to do is, who do you voodoo, bitch? I used to play the big casinos in Vegas or Atlanta City. Now it's just Reno or Laughlin. Some motherfucking cruise ship. So this gig here might be my last chance. I mean, there's some heavy Hollywood hitters up in there. If I could notice, yeah, I could be right back up on top there. You know what I'm saying?